Okay, yeah. So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome and thank you all for joining. So, just a general overview for those. We'll watch it later. This is a sync on a on the discussion of unifying and consolidating uh, tooling for evaluation, which we're naming LI5 plus prop library, but that's the final goal. Um, and well, we'll discuss this. So what we did is open this, uh, I did this merger, I opened this merge request with a general idea, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, not this, not this, not this, not this. Okay. Um, I have demo. Yeah. So on this, I gave a general idea of where we could go, but no immediate steps on how to achieve that, mostly because I am not part of either LI5 or prompt library, and I don't think I should be, uh, I can, I have the knowledge necessary to do so. So my goal with this, our my goal, and I hope it's our goal as well, is to bring this conversation out more on the how rather than the general uh, final goal. I think the final goal was somewhat already discussed on the blueprint, uh, and most people are in accordance. And just a recap is that Currently, we have these three components, prompt library, LI5, a gateway, prompt library, and LI5 share a lot of the goals, a lot of the code even, uh, has a lot of replicated code, but they are optimized for different things. Uh, and what we want to achieve in the end is reduce to the most this amount of duplicated code and duplicated maintenance. Um, and have a solid experience for, for, for I, I say our customers because the teams are the consumers of, of this product. Um, so that both this is transparent, any, anyone can jump in and, and see what's going on. Uh, this invites contributors and this is easy to use both at scale and at uh, local uh, one-shot uh, evaluations. Um, yeah, so first of all, comments on this ideas discussion on uh, the general idea. Well, let me let me add probably I would like just to share to 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 you know to think about that a little a bit more. Uh, I'd like to say that I don't feel that we are going to replace prompt library with ELI five or ELI five with prompt library. Because mm -hmm. I think that the main goal is just to find, you know, how to merge or concatenate both solutions to get the best. Because prompt library has something special that, let's say, ELI5 doesn't have and, you know, vice versa. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why it would be great probably just to find a way how to uh, keep working together, how to satisfy our, uh, Eduardo said, our internal customer. Because yeah, that's what we just really would like to say just just you know to remove all potential fears. Yeah, yeah, I think so. This is why I also not removed Li five from the. I I also think we have each each one has a specific, like it was they were optimized for different things. And uh, on my view from outside from talking to to, to the team members and using Li five was optimized for for one shot user friendliness and prompt library was optimized for robustness and statistical well, robustness and reliability robustness in terms of statistical robustness right yeah that's that's a good i, I think I, I concur with that breakdown but honestly stefan i think so you know that because i remember we had the discussion uh, you know i think two years ago right when we started to develop this project all together I think initially, I think prompt library had another idea and a lot of things has changed, right? So that's why the, the, the core part, let's say data flow that we have there, it was initially created for scale, right? Yep. And then we tried to reuse the same tool, let's say for other kind of, you know, evaluations, which is probably maybe doesn't really work well based on the experience that I see from, uh, from our internal customer, right? So like prompt library supports a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. And 
best thing that we can run uh, it is scale, especially let's say if we need to pre-process the data set and we need to make some post process some you know kind of post process the data set yeah and uh, but you see it's hard to use prompt library for uh, for customer for the internal customer and we don't have UI so it 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 seems like this is the thing that really let's say developers they really would like to see this kind of you know UI and so you know to have some kind of filters that what Langsmith provides right so you can filter yeah. a role I totally agree the uh, the UI is definitely the killer feature for Langsmith on the side um, and I don't think Beam particularly serves them in that regard it's you're right it's kind of a driving a screw with a hammer in that context. Yeah, I think uh, I remember we discussed, you know, put, uh, having UI with the prompt library project, but I think we probably, I have a feeling that we lost this, you know, step already. I, I don't think that let's, I'm trying to say that I don't think that we need to create this kind of UI right now. No. If we are not, if we don't want, let's say, to create our full, you know, in-house solution for evaluation, but it seems like it's fine for the company to keep using Langsmith. So that's why, yeah, it seems like reasonable right now just to join, you know, to merge prompt library for scale and also add gateway there and also add ELI5 project, which is just honestly, you know, kind of, you know, just wrappers around the Langsmith API and nothing else. You know, because because the best thing that we have with Langsmith right now is just UI and it's very, it's very easy to write evaluators. And that's, I think, what custom, uh, what you know, developers that that they love. I see a lot of uh, you know comments. They really love how to develop, uh, um, how to develop uh, evaluators. But what I feel, we can also do the same with prompt library, right? As part of the CF, because we can, uh, because we can, we we should have evaluators for for evaluating something at scale, right? So we can somehow we can mimic the Langsmith API, you know, giving the uh, option to for, for developers to use the existing prompt library infrastructure, but with this easy access, you know, to write evaluators. That would be interesting. Uh, what, 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 what evaluator usually is? Sorry? In, can you... uh, what, what, what usually, like, can you give a few examples of what an evaluator usually look like? Like what are they really yeah, on? Yeah, so uh, I have an bar over here. Yeah, exactly so, for this. Uh, where's the um, you, you know, so our developers, so they are feel comfortable with evaluators because the main thing with evaluators that they are trying to achieve is just to compare actual with expected. And that sounds like a unit test, right? Or any other test. So you just compare actual with expected. And the way you compare, this is the evaluator itself. So you just need to yeah. write, say, a Python function, or just a Python cloud doesn't matter. So let's say Python function, where you just receive your actual and you receive your expected, and then you yeah. apply whatever you want. So you can apply LLM judge. You can apply, I don't know, uh, you know, like uh, you can just compare uh, exact strings. You can calculate perplexity, or whatever. So, so this, the the thing that's really uh, the like the probably the killer feature of Langsmith, like. And nothing else, honestly. Yeah. Thank you later. So let me just go ahead quickly on what an evaluator looks like on Linksmith. Um, mm -hmm. Where was I? Here. Okay, so this is uh, me adding the functional correctness for it. This, this doesn't exist in stock Linksmith. And none of the base, like in, I need to extend quite a lot of, of the base, but it was simple either way. Uh, so I try to split one in a, a pure Python function to be able to do this uh, so that I can use anywhere. And then a second part that connects the length to, to, to the length limit. So the first one doesn't depend, it's it's agnostic. And this part is the one that actually uh, connects to the length chain. I had to do some alterations. Let me open over here. Uh, evaluation functions. Yeah, so execute test and then to call it length chain correctness is like here on evaluate the pi. So I am adding to LI5 both local and uh, LS evaluation. So if I want to run locally without using an uh, evaluator, but this is what it looks like. So I had just passed the name or the functions. This is local evaluator. So you, they are functions that you pass to the to the evaluation uh, of length smith. And you can 
and depending on the on the situation the, the, on the user needs this is a little bit evolving into the json configuration of prompt library the more options we add the more it will start looking like the json configuration of prompt library but if we propose some sensible defaults uh, we can reduce the size uh, of the thing right but that's what it looked like so back. yeah okay thank you but they all just take so, expected. So that is the expected. Oh, sorry. That's they all provide, they provide. Yeah, uh, they provide some. Yeah, they provide. They, they have here. Where is it? They have a prediction, a reference, an input. Reference is other information that might be necessary. For example, this is uh, functional correctness over MBPP, MBPP. So you have the golden answer, which is the expected. You have the prediction, which is the input, but you have the tests are on the reference. So you can add more information that is just the input and output. Uh, there is even a more simple, you know, a simpler version of this uh, evaluator. You can just provide a function or, you know, a class with the call method that has, you know, like run, which is your actual and inputs, which is your expected, and that's all. all right. And that's... this is like. This is the the the, the one the string evaluator that comes from Langchain. So they have yeah. like three different options how to write evaluators in Langsmith. That's uh well, that's the one that I learned when I was doing this. Right. Oh, cool. So we just polymorphically create an option. So we can we can we can add the fourth one, prompt library. There you go. Right. Like pr prompt library sounds like a good engine to run evaluation at scale, right? And honestly, we can. I think that we can output results to any sync, right? It can be a Langsmith interface. It can be BigQuery. And I think that like, both options are fine because Langsmith, maybe it's useful for developers, but BigQuery may be useful for us, right? SML engineers, because maybe having results from developers, maybe having these results, maybe you know, we, can, um, we can extract some additional data for us, right? So when we work offline, so everyone evaluates, but we work offline. We compare. We can we can we can analyze their data. Mm -hmm. Um, we have we have have met, we have evaluators in from library that look drastically different because we relied on pipelines like Apache BIM pipelines. I can show you a quick example as well. Let me um, open prompt library. Uh, um, send you a link. I'm on it. Yeah. Oh, it's they just have for some reason the moderation is the quick one. Um, <laughs> where is it? Is it prompt lib? I I got a link to chat. You can click on it. Okay. On the chat. Zoom chat. There's so many chats. It's hard to find out. Which go to live four twenty. 420? Yeah, we need to refactor it, but this, yeah. Uh -huh. So that's the value, that was the was similarity score. So mm -hmm. given, given two answers, calculate similarity scores. So what's this? That's what? That's um, a Sure. The way I see is that this um a lot of this is combining. Where uh, is the actual the batch, application? The batch yeah, com com model. Combining is because uh, it's, it's operating on batches. Um, uh -huh. So for each batch, we, we, we would find the, the answer for the same question. Mm -hmm. So so one question gets different model for answers. And then for, for one, for every question, we will compare the the answers of the same question so that's the combining like group by um those stuff and then up, after group by after we we get the uh, answers for the same question it's just a matter of uh, uh the last the last beam step the last, yeah, the line, last which one is, oh this yeah. is the one that actually compared responses right all of this is about yeah. creating the comparison pairs yeah, and yeah. this yeah. is one 
So yeah, that... and this is where is this? Uh... I mean, to you to use the parlance in Langsmith, that right there is where the evaluator. Yeah, gets exactly. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm thinking of. How we do batching Batch, and how we focus on yield. If you generically create batches and just pass it in an evaluator, yeah. then I create a batch. I run whatever I'm given. And we're good. This is so where that function the of evaluate of like run tests would go, for example, right? Uh, uh, of the other evaluator. There is one huge issue here that I think we had even before in the sys. It's still right now. It's throttle, right? It's hard to make API requests from data flow, right? So I agree with me. From hard to make API requests from data flow. Yes, it's hard to call any API from data flow because it's uh, you still need yeah. to control the number of uh, workers that you have. But let's say you can have, let's say you would like to have five workers for the pre-processing step and only one worker to make API calls. Uh, otherwise, you need to throttle, right? Because you cannot control yeah. the number of workers per every transformation. Sorry, Tanya, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. I think I think that throttle is for the um the model calls, so mostly to do with um I think in this case, I think to do with the the third party, like um either I think the GitLab models or third-party model APIs. Yes, but I'll give you one more example. If you remember, we cannot make more than one call to do a chat, right? It's hard to make parallel calls to do a chat API because we somehow have one memory object for history, right? That's true. For user, yeah. For user. And yeah, it's for, why... for given users, the cache. Yes. So what I'm trying to say is that I think that make and we also don't have traces here. Because what I see what developers they do, they check traces. They check, you know, how LLM answers, like the raw answer from LLM before post press before post processing. Yeah. Because you well, do, do they need traces for this construct at this point? Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, sorry, go ahead. I don't want to be rude or anything, but I think we could, we should, like, we need to talk about this, like, yeah, every component, everything. But for this uh, sync, uh, I really want to talk about how to get at least the, the first iteration out, like, what would be the steps to get there and uh, the implications, and perhaps even already, I don't know, get that blueprint to a place where we can already start doing something on the next milestone, at least the first steps. No, well, that's the thing. We're and... just trying to find a good, you know, uh, <laughs> motivation what to change. And what I feel so, maybe we, as you said, as the first iteration, what I feel so, can we replace, you know, parts where we call uh, model models from uh, Langsme, uh, from Trump library, can we replace this this parts with ELI5 itself? So it's like we use, let's say, prompt library to pre-process our data sets, to post-process our data sets, to work with BigQuery, but we still use, you know, um, ELI5. So it will look like, uh, you know, like a bottleneck. Like ELI5 will be our bottleneck where we can control the, how to make requests to, you know, to, to different APIs. Because we use LangChain in the ELI5, so we can write input parser and output parsers. But if you need scale, you apply prompt library for your input before calling all APIs and for your output, you know, just to compare something. But in that case, would you import ELI5 as a library or would it exist in the same repository? Honestly, I have a feeling that we need to move everything to one repo. I will just create okay. a new repo called CF have one folder for prompt library, have another folder for ELI5, and let's just think how we, to merge them together. We, do we need to create a new repo? Can we just move ELI5 into prompt library repository? Is there any reason why not to? It's up to David. I don't know how all these namespaces no, work. It's, right it's not up to David. It's up to, uh, to, to your discussion, I believe. David so would just do, say... We can do any option. We can, as I said, we're not trying to replace. We're trying to merge. Yeah. We can prompt library to ELI5 or vice versa, ELI5 to prompt library. For me, it's mostly how, let's say, managers, they feel comfortable. 
because yeah. we have two different namespaces I right think... now and how do you want to manage these namespaces i think no, no i think in terms of naming the the cef should be the top level name right mm -hmm. Seems seems like it, that name it, it should include everything, evaluation related related. Um, um, and then yeah, so I I I heard you mention something like prompt library can be another metric to identify, and, and then and, and and then and then there's another idea that 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 we can call identify inside prompt library. So so it seems like identify can be another metric in inside prompt library. So, so not, not a metric, a uh, runner. I think is what we're trying to say. There. Runner, uh, runner, runner. Yeah, yeah, runner. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, that's viable. That that's really viable pass because um, 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 yeah. As a first iteration, it just combines everything into one yeah. seemingly uh, one program at least, right? Uh, how how can uh, how will a user usually call LE5? Like how exactly the same by from slidery by CLI a using CLI a CLI program, right? Yeah. So if we want to call it inside another program, ideally it's not through CLI. It's 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 um um because everything's in Python is it through like imports of like stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you want to call LE5. Through CLI, it will be sub process. We don't want to use sub process. Um, yeah, and you can call you can call LI five through report as well. That should be fine. Nothing prevents. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We can get around just, not having to. You, you, you see, you can use cool. ELI five as entry point to CF, and then call prompt libraries engine. Um. No, no, that, yeah, that that that's that's the part where, where I'm not understanding because, um. What the basically well, yeah let's, let's step back look, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say that we need to we need to stay flexible for customers. So it means that you know a lot of things have changed and uh different teams they would like to develop their evaluation frameworks or well, not frameworks like pipelines. Maybe it's up to them totally. Maybe we need mm -hmm. to help them to do them. I think this is like a balance. So they can okay. do what they want with the frame, evaluation framework, but if we have an option, we can also help them to do that. So we just need to provide them a kind of, you know, platform or a framework, doesn't matter, so they can write whatever they want. So they right. feel comfortable to work with the with LangChain and LangSmith. But I don't think they need to, that the customers are worried and developers, I don't think that they need to care about the runners that we use. So you see, that's the thing. So we can we can run prompt library inside, you know, after calling ELI five. So you call ELI five as an entry point, but instead of let's say calling the Langsmith runner, sometimes you call the prompt library runner. Uh, so what I'm suggesting here is this is the the yes, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Langsmith or prompt library or local. For example, this has three options that would pass. So what I'm suggesting is LI5 is a tool, becomes a tool that facilitates the creation of the config file for prompt library. So all like you pro we, it provides a lot of defaults for, for the, the configuration file, right? And it just like converts and you can call it through LI5. That's you can use prompt lab through LI5. And you can pass also JSON file. Like you can, like everything that would work with prompt library works, uh, like the configuration uh, would work. So you could pass like a config uh, equals yeah. config.json, for example, yeah. right? Nothing changes. This is just passed down to prompt library. So it becomes a very thin cleat for, uh, for prompt library. On the, in the term of uh, then when it's Langsmith, so when it's a prompt library, that is when it's it changes, um, and this is how it would be called for now. Ideally, we want to move to a point where we are UI driven or pipeline driven at least. Uh, for most use cases, this is something Igor was working, and I think that he showed you, um, but. Uh, that that could be an idea as well of like 
to have in the pipelines and you trigger a pipeline on GitLab and it runs a live five and does all the shenanigans for, for generates a report or, or whatnot, uploads to Langsmith. Because there are three, like Langsmith has three components. Langsmith has data sets and it has then the, not the evaluators, but the, the like evaluate the engine to run these evaluators and to run uh, Langchain evaluators. And then it has the experiment, experiment logging and visualization. We can use or not any of these three components. Is a uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, so you can use, for example, Langsmith as the data set, uh, but not the engine or not. We can use, for example, Google Docs spreadsheets for data sets and prompt library for execution or something on those lines, right? So these are Google Docs huh? and spreadsheets for data sets. <laughs> Sorry, can we uh, I didn't hear. Okay. Oh, I said, can we please not use Google Docs or spreadsheets for data sets? Okay, so uh, I'll put the powered way to like make a mess is not the, not the way forward here. Uh, Stefan is highly I guess, right? against <laughs> spreadsheets. <laughs> no spreadsheets. No, that's fine. I actually think we're the, the yeah. data set conversation we're having in parallel. So we'll we'll settle on something there. But yeah, generally. Yeah. I think, Stephen, I think I think any approach is fine as the input one. The only thing is how what is our single source of truth? Yeah, That's it. yeah. yeah. we don't have it's of truth it's right easy, now. Yeah, it's accessible and it's uh, it's well, there's one as long yeah. as that. Okay. So, I know like, three different places where we store data sets right now, and that's a huge problem. You see? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That that's what I've been working on for the past you know month or so. Yeah, and I think that is this component here first that move away so you have data set creation and management in prompt library and you're working on removing this away from prompt library right and that's a good step right uh step uh, step uh but now if we move them i want to go back into a little bit of the first step which is put them in the same place somehow what are the implications of those uh so move into the same repo we're going to have to merge the maintainers. We're going to have to merge the issues. The MRs that are existing are, are going to have to somehow be recreated. Anything else? Um, maintainers issues. And then uh, I think, um, so, so they will, so at first, like we're talking about this first iteration, they're still staying in their, their different directory. Right, and then we gradually working on merging them. So mm -hmm. in that case, we would have two entry point, right? To just as one entry, like one two CLI program, one for eighty five, one for Palm Library. Okay. So, so in that case, I think, I think yeah, nothing, nothing else is needed. But once, um, but but the first thing we would do is to move the top level, uh, program CLI, like top level Python package. At least move the like merge the uh pyproject.toml, merge the log, merge the CLI entry point. Yes, uh, that's the thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Right. Um, so we probably need to, I would say that we need to create an issue and think about a better CLI that we can apply, you know, for this CF framework. You know, and this same CF framework is responsible for calling any of their engines, right? That's what you're talking about, right? Hold on. I think there's, there's also something here. We should probably have a doc. We should probably have some sort of set of docs. So when someone shows up to use this thing, we route them in the right direction. Because if they walk in and it's like, well, there was Eli five, and now there's prompt library and Eli five. What do I do? Having some sort of doc that effectively gets them to like, if you want to do this, go here. If you want to do that, go there. Yeah. Just even as like a training wheel of like going forward, this is how we will enter you into it. Yeah. So over time, that doc evolves as the project evolves, and they just keep going through the same spot. Mm, um, yeah, yeah, probably, but it will be hard. I don't um, think so. 
I actually think that won't be too difficult. Like Eduardo has already started the blueprint, and I think we could turn that into an ADR. Um, from the ELI five side, it it literally is just a wrapper around the Langsmith API. It's yeah. it's nothing more complicated than that. I would probably also start, you know, and also mention that in the in the blueprint about the key key points that every framework has, you know, because let's say what I love in prompt libraries the configuration system that you can pass. It's very complicated right now. Maybe it's hard for developers. Maybe we need just to use another common format at GitLab, which is YAML. Uh, but we still need, you know, this configuration. Maybe it should be not as, you know, rich. Maybe we need to have some, a lot of, because in ELI 5, you see, that's the reason why we have a lot of defaults, because we don't want to, you know, our developers struggling, you know, with a lot of configurations. But we need something in between, right? Yeah. yeah. We need configuration. So that's why we probably need to revisit the CLI the CLI, the CLI part, the interface, the input interface of this new, let's say, CF framework. Right. So I, I, had a, I took a shot at this about four or five months ago and made a UI that effectively generated our configs for us. Oh, mm -hmm. so it says, oh I want to run local or I want to run on Beam. It's like, well, then there's like six or seven different things you need to add to the config file. Let me just make you that in the JSON blob. And so they're clicking selections on the left and on the right, it's generating a JSON blob. And when they're done, just copy, paste, run. That's what I was working on. Where, um, where does that work what? with Stefan? That uh, cool. I think that's on my local at the moment. I'll push that up. I'll check that down, push that yeah. up. Uh, sure. 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 Another great thing. Um, Alex, I, I have a question. Why? So why do you think YAML like the config being JSON or YAML, in my opinion, doesn't really matter. The complexity is the same. Yeah. I think I let's, think right now what's yes and no. What yes here's no. to let's well, move why. the YAML, so YAML and JSON conversation to its own issue, I think. This yeah. we can discuss this uh, for a while. That's so a, that's a, that's a small technical thing that we just need yeah. to uh, to talk about yeah, later. So it is a good question though. I'll give the quickest TLDR. We can move it offline. What we've noticed, Hong Tao, with the teams, our users or consumers, they just want things that they're familiar with. And like YAML is just a really well understood like default at GitLab. It's not that it's any better than JSON. It's just the less things people have to reason about when they're trying to use these tools, the more likely they are to use the tool. But oh, honestly, that, yeah, like yeah, Hong Tao, I think it means yeah, nothing yeah, for us, right? I'm I'm not hanging up on, on any tools like JSON YAML, they're fine. But I think the real problem why uh it, it appears to be complicated or like uh, hard to figure out is the lack of documentation. Like like, uh, like yeah. till until this day, there is no documentation telling people what configuration fields are there available. Uh, so if we don't me, provide them as as an example, people don't know about it. Like only only, only me or Tan or like the, the the four of us know about some configuration field that, that no one else know about. So yeah, there's really lack of documentation that is making things complicated. I think that's well, I think awesome comment. Me, Super. The... Awesome. I, I don't know if we need to document. That's the thing. I was like, if if it's just they show up, they click some buttons, and out comes the thing, and they don't yeah. care what it is. Yeah. Or, so with, with an UI like the, what, what the stuff like, 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 yeah, it, we don't it, need to. We'll be there. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's on that point. It's it's not really that JSON. JSON, well, YAML is a little bit easier to write than JSON for me. Uh, but the problem is it's overwhelming. There are too many options that I don't really know what they are about. Uh, and yeah. I don't want to have to configure every single thing within that, that configuration. I want to have a lot of defaults and I change what's necessary for my use case. I want to, for example, even maybe like, Extend like YAML provides extension mechanisms. So you have a local configuration that they can just have all of those defaults and then update it with a little uh, shenanigan here and there. I personally would prefer a CLI over a uh, over the like I'll generate the, the configuration from the CLI itself with the same options. I think there are still there are even some uh, some automatic tools that does that. Like if yeah. you pass the schema, they create the the CLI for those. But the yeah. on on like the CLI versus config system. So I so I had this really bad experience. Like in, in, in my experience is that if you rely on CLI, once the options number of options rolls like to about like yeah. greater than ten, it's really hard to keep track. Like with the config not... file, you can 
the thing is you can commit it, right? So people yeah. can see it. Otherwise, it's just a in bash history. Otherwise, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not yeah. going, I'm not saying against configuration. I'm saying that you should be able to, like, for example, when you create a Kubernetes uh, file, uh, you have it's a file, but you can use the CLI to create the file and already pass the options to already define it, put the defaults. It's more like it's not a versus, it's configuration file facilitated by a, a CLI or a UI. Or what? I would suggest some of this conversation to the, to the issue because it's just about yeah. the format. Because technically, for the prompt library ELF5, it means nothing. It's still a pedantic based model that we use or any other, I don't know, class that we just, you know, that we create uh, reading the configuration. Yeah. So it's mostly about customers. So let's move it to, to, the, to the issue because, um, you know, we all agree that we have a lack of documentation. It's both in ELI5 and the prompt library. And uh, we also we probably need to think about uh, how to simplify our configuration, input configuration. So for me, what I'm hearing from this conversation is that the first milestone uh, of this blueprint will be moved to the same repo, right? Same repo. David, so do we have a CF uh, top level namespace right now? Uh, no. No, what's oh, okay. what is the top level namespace for the what about renaming prompt library to Ceph? Yeah, um, yeah. So, so so that that would be easier because transferring prompt library to another namespace is a lot of trouble because we have a lot of containers in the registry and we have a lot of like pipelines, uh schedule pipelines that are in charge of daily runs. So we don't want to really transfer. If we can avoid transferring, that that would be that would be ideal. Yeah. Renaming, I guess, renaming is fine. So we have the AI evaluation. Is is the name AI evaluation? Is anything dependent on that or that particular file path? Because we could just change that to be CEF representing the collection of tools, and then just add in the ELI file. Only path. only images. Uh, create, they created a lot of images in the Docker registry. I think they depend on the you know on the namespace. Yeah. We cannot, we we, can't rename. Okay. What we can do is change the name of. Mm, we could froze, freeze prompt library as is and not delete prompt library and create a clone of prompt library, which would be Ceph and, and move uh, the LI5 inside of it. That way, yeah, we, wouldn't agree, affect, approach, yeah. uh, we wouldn't affect existing images or whatnot. They're still there. We, once you release new ones, you're gonna to have to be changing little by little, right? Yeah. Uh, but it gives it doesn't break what's out there. We create a new new repository called as, as a clone of current prompt library, move li5 inside of that, and go from there. We yeah. try to migrate as many issues from li5 to prompt library. We try to uh, and then we're gonna to have to triage these issues to see what makes sense how this combined effort would look like for to, to act on those issues. Yeah. Uh, the maintainers we can have by code owner. So the maintainers of LI5, we put a code owner file on LI5 with the old maintainers and the similar for prompt library. That way it's not mixed uh, for now. Eventually we want to be a single maintainership for both uh, projects. We want to have more maintainers and not have this confusion. But that's uh, my suggestion. Yeah. Well, for all that sounds good. In the ELI5, I actually don't think it would be too much of a shift and lift. We currently have 15 open issues. We have about 10 MRs in flight. Um, it should be pretty straightforward. And I I just love the idea of working towards the consolidated, uh, the consolidated approach for the teams because then we can have the one UI, the one set of docs, the one entry point, and teams can have a good strong default and then hack away as they like, essentially. Dan, uh, sorry, yeah, Dan, so what do you mean? What do you think? Just wanted to know your yeah. opinion. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I just try to see what the audience are, like whether they're going to be um, working on both at the same time or be use cases where they just effectively we just collocate two of these in the same space but they're still effectively two different entities mm -hmm. um yeah. 
I can see arguments on like streamlining, you know, the process or kind of a boilerplate to do with projects related things and maintainership. But I mean, at the very early stage, it'll be both of them going to be kind of like two isolated entities that but if we, if we merge, collocated together. But if we merge, let's say, into one repo and start to treat prompt libraries as an engine, will it be fine for you? So as Eduardo said, you, when you when you run, yeah. you have an option to select either um, prompt libraries and engine or Langsmith. And at the same time, you see, even in the prompt library, we can connect, you know, and send output results both to BigQuery and, uh, you know, to the Langsmith yeah. interface. Because right now, what you have is that you have Lang, uh, LI5 highly coupled to Langsmith, and you have prompt library highly coupled to BIM and, and GCP mm -hmm. and Dataflow, right? We need yeah. to... Yeah. to make each of those a thin library over something that is used by both of them. So if you have, for example, evaluation functions, it's the same for both, but then you have an adapter for Beam, an adapter for uh, Langsmith, same way that it was the, the functional uh, f functional correctness was built. Like we have, but for that to even take place in the first place, we need uh, them to coexist and evolve from there. Uh, ideally, we want to put a situation where wants to contribute, doesn't know if they're contributing to a live file. Like, I want to improve my use case, right? I go there and improve. Whether yes, it's one, one folder or the other, we just have to make it clear over the documentation where what goes where, right? Uh, but then again, yeah. this is... Once, yeah, this is this is this is the north star that we're, we we need to to go for, and it might take yeah. two, three, four milestones, um, mm. but the early work will be putting them together, and then I think extracting will become natural over time as we're building this, because you're gonna see duplicated issues if they're creating the same place, right? They're oh. seeing okay that issue is coming up. We can apply this for both prompts, and then we're going to start building up in a way that it's already. Uh, we might have some legacy code. We well, we always have legacy code. The code that I wrote yesterday is already legacy code. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but that's part of software engineering. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I would say that there are also some parts in the prompt library that would be great to have in the final project. Uh, because, uh, for instance, we the way we read. Um, uh, uh prompts for their evaluators for the models right so we read them from file but i think that also makes sense uh, to connect you know the cf to the gateway finally as you mentioned Eduardo, in your proposal because yeah. because let's say in this case we will get because i think what we can do right now and we can do that we can start even right now we can start moving all uh you know we can start connecting ea gateway to prompt library because um, we we need to have models in the AI gateway in order to connect them, you know, in a very yeah. fast way to prod. So we don't need to repeat the same code twice, right? In first in uh, in the prompt library and then in the AI gateway. Let's say so. Let's say if you if you want to use uh, let's say a custom model, that's what Eduardo team right now they are focusing on. If you would like to, if you would like to use a custom model for do a chat. You should create it in EA Gateway, and then when you connect to the EA Gateway, the prompt library to EA Gateway, you already have this new model. You ha you already yeah. have all new connectors, and I think the same works with prompts in the EA Gateway. Uh, Alejandro created a kind of prompt registry. I don't know why we have this name honestly, but anyway, so we have a kind of prompt registry. It's a combination of model input parser and output parser. But that's what I think we already have in the prompt library. This is just a file with the prompt. So we can simplify prompt library by connecting it to the yeah, gateway. Yeah. And I we will so. get more, more trend, we will be more transparent and also more support from the yeah, gateway maintainers. But there is a huge, you know, and uh, reliable. Yeah. So right now there will be a lot of pressure put on AI gateway if we do that, because like the, the call volume. No, you you can you create can your own it. instance of AI yes. gateway. Let's deploy to the GCP instance and it's all. It's a Docker image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm just like, 
you can you can we have our own we're still gonna ham it's still gonna be hammered you can fire five or six ai gateways cool they are um they are stateless so some use cases you have you're gonna have probably to go through gitlab Uh, of course we want to have at some point like the full flow of of evaluation but for 90 percent of the cases yes yeah yeah you're right right you're right because we have different, we need to have different instances. You see, we have one instance to connect to GDK and one instance is to connect to a gateway. That's how AI gateway works right now. Yeah. AI gateway will be a lot easier to process this kind of loads than GitLab because the current setup is already processing those loads, but through GitLab. So GitLab is processing and then it's forwarding to, to AI gateway. It just gives more time because GitLab is so slow that it gives time to AI Gateway to, to recover. On this case, it will be faster to run on AI Gateway. You don't hit a production or any kind of load. We are changing. The prompts don't exist on GitLab anymore. The prompts now exist on AI Gateway. So you can make simple requests with the, the parameters that you want and then execute everything on AI Gateway. Uh, for the majority, I think it will make the pipelines of 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 prompt library now Ceph uh, a lot easier to process for most cases. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so I will consolidate, or does anybody want to take the this conversation to the blueprint and write it on the blueprint? I'm very happy to do that for you, Eduardo. I know you're probably up to your eyeballs and stuff. I can go ahead and take the action item and I'll translate what we spoke about into the blueprint and then I will ping everyone who's on this call. Just like, yep, yeah, all right. Just looks like it makes sense. I'll just try and break it down and this is our first iteration. This is our North Star. And then we can uh, open up any issues that we wanted to discuss um, from some of these sidecars yeah. and then we'll go from there. Yeah, and I will share the, I will put the link of this uh... We should put the link of this video, video both on YouTube and on uh, on the conversation on the on the blueprint as well. Yeah, hundred percent. On it, the blueprint itself, like yes. not only to the Mar, but to the blueprint itself. Yeah, cool. If you can send me the if you can send me the link, I can also upload it to one of our playlists. But overall, yeah. thanks so much everybody for coming along, and thank you Eduardo for organizing this. This is um this has been a super productive conversation. I really feel like we're moving in the right direction with this. Uh, I think we probably need one more next week. Probably. I think we're probably going to end up having one or more two, if I had to guess realistically. So what I'll do is we'll go, we'll update the blueprint first, and then we can toss them yeah. on the calendar and go from there. We so. can move forward without making all the decisions as well. Yes. So if we have some concrete path, like for example, we want to merge stuff, we can already start doing that. Like we cannot start with this process and then start discussing. From my point of view, this is already successful because we are already discussing. Like we are already talking. We're already like thinking about merging and don't see issues as well. Yeah, prefer merging. We can start merging uh, even right now yeah. without you uh, know uh, pushing the blueprint. So don't wait for the full big picture of things to happen before you start like acting on uh, that direction. Uh, that's, that's that's something that uh, cool. So awesome. Thank you all so much uh, for the conversation and for for the plans. I'll yeah. see you soon. See you soon, Thank folks. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.